Hi, hello everyone. You're welcome to another edition of Veta Convo. Uh, my name is Yomi Omogbojo. I'm your host tonight. And um, sorry, we're coming up a bit late, so we have some technical issues. But you know, um, it's a bit difficult when you are when you are um, working across different countries and transmitting live. So. Um, but we kick on with the show now. Uh, we have a guest to you, for you today on Better Convo. Um, he's a Kenya athlete, and his name is Mark Oteno Odiambo. And um, I'll bring Mark up right now. But before then, I want to tell you a bit about Mark. Uh, Mark is actually the uh, record holder for the 100 meters for Kenya, and in a country where most of the athletes and is actually known for long distance running and um, a lot of world titles have been won from 800 meters and above. It was quite unusual to have an athlete who is a specialist in 100 meters. So it's a, so I hope today you find it interesting and you find it, you enjoy this session of the podcast to hear from him why he decided to choose uh, 100 meters and why he, he defied all the odds in Kenya to take this. And then also hear about what the problems have been and what the challenges have been for him uh, as one of the few Kenya athletes uh, during the springs. So, um, so that's that. But on this show, uh, we try to bring out the African athletes, actually the ones that are not very popular or... Are up, up and coming so that you can hear from them and understand the challenges, the highs and lows, and what it takes to be an elite athlete um, from Africa with all the challenges of coming from a developing nation. So, uh, so that's it. Um, Mark Oteno, you're welcome to Beta Convo. Hi. Hey. Finally, Hi, you're here. You good, good. Yes. <laughs> it's good to have you. You know, I've just, in the introduction, said you are the first Kenya that I've seen that um, decided against all odds to do sprints in a country where mm. it's much easier to go to the uh, long distance, middle and long distance running, where you've had most of your champions and probably you have a lot of coaches in that. So tell us mm. a bit about yourself. Who is Mark Odiambo? Um, Mark Odiambo is a born again Christian, and I'm a husband, and also I'm a sprinter in Kenya. Okay. So, why did you decide to go to sprints? Um, I decided to go this because I had the passion to do sprints, but in high school I was doing football. I was doing both football and athletics, but even when I was a child, I wanted to do sprint so much but finishing high school um i focused more on athletics so that's where my passion is oh okay so but has it been for you because i understood that mm. your coach is not even based in kenya so and then you have mm. this lockdown um you're not able to train so have you been able to manage yourself um I've able to manage myself even with training for the past two years without my coach being around. So even with this lockdown, it's nothing new to me. So me and my wife have been able to train for the past two years alone, just coordinating with my coach with via email, even via WhatsApp, texting, sending videos, and also the program, doing the workouts. At least while he sends the workouts, I have to study the workouts as well with him and know what I'm doing. So that the next day, what well, I'm going to do, at least for the, at least to go for the, for the training, um, there's nothing that's new. But at least I've gone ahead, and to know what that I'm about, what, what I'm doing. Yeah. So, well, you know, for other athletes in Kenya who are long distance running, uh, it's much easier mm -hmm. for them to train on the roads. And with this COVID nineteen, mm -hmm. most of the uh, sporting places are closed. Uh, I'm sure the stadium mm -hmm. also will be closed. So you're not able, to, you're mm. not going to be uh, able to do what other athletes can do. So you mm. probably would need specialist equipment. You probably need the track. You probably need uh, to walk 
on your speed, uh, uh, you know, in the gym. You probably need to work on your speed on the track or work in the gym. So how, how difficult is that for you at this time? Um, at this time, honestly, I can say um, without sponsorship at the moment, um, you know, with athletes abroad, they, they're being sponsored so they can buy equipment for themselves. And for the federation, they can open. They have so many tracks all over their uh, countries. But for us, um, you really have to think outside the box because you have to improvise with everything that's around you. Because even right now, um, I haven't visited the gym for the past five months. So okay. I'm just using bottles, filling them with water so that I, at least I can feel the weight. And also track work. Mm -hmm. um, there's, a, there's a near forest that's, that's near my place. It's called Karura Forest. It's a very, very, very big forest. So that's why I go there and do my speed work and also do my endurance as well. Oh, okay. So this, this is a makeshift uh, arrangement for you. But are you training yeah. alone or do you have all the sprinters around that you're you know, motivating or that you inspired that are training with you? No, honestly, the only person that I'm training with is only my wife. <laughs> It's only my oh, wife okay. that I'm training with. Oh, yeah, other sprinters, they have their coaches. So even at the moment, I'm even thinking of trying looking for someone who I can help, who I can eat, like I can bring them up the way so that they cannot, sorry, so that they cannot face the troubles that I've, that I've been facing. So I'm really looking for someone that we can train side by side so that we can help each other. Yeah. I mean, the... How about the federation and the government? Is there any support this period for you and other athletes? Um, for the government, honestly, I can say they're really trying their best because they're helping other athletes like the junior athletes. So they have been supplying food all around the counties. Um, but I've been getting some help from both my, uh, my wife's side or my family side as well. So they've been really supportive and also my, some of my closest friends, they have been really supportive during this time of season. So both financially and also spiritually. And yeah, they've been really helpful during this time. Okay, so now with the Olympics postponed <clears throat> and then mm. the World Championship also postponed by a year, um, I'm sure a lot of your priorities for this year have changed. So, mm. so what's the setup now? What's, what's your plan for the next two years? For the next two years. Yes. It's already, oh, What's your plan now? Yeah. What's your program oh, like for the next two years? Um, I'm really aiming to go for the Olympics next year. Since I, I was hoping to go for this year, but since it has shifted, so I'm hoping to go for the Olympics next year and also for the World Championship that's coming in 2022. And my plan also is to be an African champion for next year's Senior Africa Championship. That's coming. So for the past few years, I've been reaching semifinals, and I'm really hoping to at least move to the next step from semis now to the finals, and also aim for a medal. Yeah. Okay. So are you going to are you setting priorities now for next year? Because you know next year is quite heavy. There's the Africa Championship, there's the Olympics, and also you mm. have the um. And then in 2022, you have the Commonwealth mm. Games, you have the World Championship. So, mm. are you going to select events to go to? Are you going? To, are you working towards competing in all of them? Compete? Sorry. Are you working towards competing in all these events, or are you going to pick specific uh, competitions to attend next year? Um, we're doing. I'm going to participate in all the events. Hoping okay. to participate in both 100 and 200 because that, that, that's the only event that I'm specializing in. And also, okay. I'm hoping to get um, a manager that will, that, that also that I'll get some few races around the world so that I can qualify for the Olympics as well. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. I wanted to show you, before you go on, I wanted to show you something uh, you said okay. in, in an interview on the other day. So you spoke about your work. So obviously, mm. you're still uh, working full time. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, you have to mm. also compete. So you said, I work 
eight to five and balance it off with training. It's a, mm. it's a tough lifestyle, but with no sponsors, I can't solely rely on my track of career to make ends meet. So mm. basically, you working full time, I understand, in the poster company um, yeah. in Nairobi. So are you yeah. able to manage work full time with track and field? Um, sometimes I have to go and ask the general manager if I can train because of the upcoming events. So yeah. most of the time I do train, I do go to the I do go to work in the morning and then later in the evening I go for my training. So it's a bit it's it's tough. Sometimes it's tough, but sometimes I even try and plead them to give me a full day because of the intensity of the workout. So oh, okay. I'll yeah, I'll take a, like a like two or three months. So I'll first I'll go to the federation and ask for a letter so that it can allow me to go and have a full day training because of the preparation of the events. But the full day, sometimes eight to five, um, during my off season, I usually go to work and at least get some dynamics and to see how things are going on. Oh, okay. So, and your managers understood you are able to cope with this. But then how about, um, have you thought about going pro? Sorry, going pro in athletics? Yes. Um, at the moment, I'm really doing it pro. But okay. in terms of sponsorship and also financial issues, it hasn't it's been, right. yes, it's not, not, it's not making me do it full time. Oh, okay. Yes. But then, but then I'm surprised because as the fastest Kenya in history over 100 meters, and yes. you you have a good brand, right? So, do you have a manager and agents, and have they approached the um, the, the companies in Kenya to see if they would like to sponsor you? Um, here in my country. Yes, in in, in Kenya. Um, honestly, the companies that we have, they really don't sponsor. They, they, they haven't really expounded on marketing athletes because the few that have been marketed, the only one that I've seen is only Kipchoge being marketed by a, a brand called Safaricom. But we normally don't get that much, but we get more attention outside with other brands and with other companies. Yeah, I'm quite surprised because Kenya is mm. known to have produced a lot of champions, right? Um, yeah. It, a lot of world championship um, and a lot of Olympic medalists are in Kenya. So I'm, mm. I was thinking the athletes or sport people generally would be the major influencers for some of these brands. But then it seems so. So for for the big athletes like the ones who have won Olympic and gold medals, do they mm. have it better, or is it just limited to you guys are in a, a, a what I would call a not so popular sport or sport code or events in Kenya. Sorry? For the big athletes, well, for the mm -hmm. athletes who have been, you mentioned Kipchoge now, but mm. there are also a lot of Olympic and World Championship uh, gold medalists from Kenya. Mm. Uh, are they also in the same boat? Are they solving the same problem or they, they have a better response? Um, okay, some of them that I know, they have been sponsored by Nike based on their oh, performance. Okay. Yeah, some of them are being sponsored by Nike. I know one of our guy who was being sponsored by another brand called um, Orange. It's also the same company close to like Safaricom, but he um, he told me that the sponsorship, his two-year con contract went, it ended, sorry. And yeah, those are, those are the only people that I know. So Majority of us, we don't get sponsorship from other brands. And every, yes. So these athletes are the one with the main clothing brand, mm. brands, right? So, yeah. but then inside Kenya, they know these athletes don't have corporate sponsors that are in country. Sorry? Some of these athletes you mentioned that are with major apparel brands in the U.S., so, mm. but then in country, Kenya companies are not sponsoring any of the athletes. Yeah, no, they're not sponsoring any athletes at the moment. Wow. Anyway, uh, moving on from sponsorship, basically, now you have to work full time 
to pay your way through the track and field. So, yeah, why are you still in the sports? Um, I'm still in the sport because I have the passion, and I believe that God has called me to do this event. And eventually, um, there's a breakthrough that I'm hoping that it will come through. So I'm also going through this at the moment because I know deep down there's someone somewhere who who will come up and feel yeah, the same way, but supporters. they won't have yeah they won't have someone to guide them. So I'm just praying that I'll be there to encourage them and tell them that everything will be okay in front. Yeah, I mean, your story is quite unique because I, I was reading um, about the way you describe some of the challenges. Um, mm. And I'm kind of worried that even if, because you know, the IOC does have the Olympic uh, Solidarity Scholarship. Uh, mm. Were you able to secure that this year? Honestly, I saw they, they only picked five athletes. Yeah, deep down I was so okay. I was so disappointed, but I was like, it's okay for those that who are going because they only picked probable athletes, um, long distance athletes that will represent the country in their distance. Like I, I know that there's a guy in 800 who was who was chosen, um, Ferguson Rotic. So he was one, he was among the guys who was selected for the scholarship. But also the I uh, the World Athletics also. Uh, release some money to help athletes um, who mm. can, you know, who can work and who are not earning during this COVID-19 uh, as mm. a kind of palliatives. So, did, mm. and that was meant to, to, to give, uh, that was meant to be given to a lot of athletes uh, mm. by, by the Federation. So, did you have, were you able to get part of that from the Athletics Kenya? Um, honestly, no. <laughs> I didn't even hear that they were they were giving out the cash because there was a form. I had that the, a few weeks ago. I had that there was a form that guys were supposed to fill. So yes. I read the form after they had the, that there was a cut down the date. Like they they had their final date. So I was like, it's okay because our federation didn't com communicate about it, and it was a bit disappointed. Yeah. But it, it was yeah, it's okay. I'm, I don't know, you know, it's, it's very difficult because I know what it takes for some of you guys to prepare for this championship. And yeah. this year, we've had a lot of athletes on this show who, even though some of them have gotten help from their sponsors and some from their federation, they, mm. it was still hard for them to cope. And it's been mm. almost six months without any competition. And, you know, so for athletes to maintain themselves at that period to train to buy supplements to, you know to pay their you know like coaches or therapies and all that it's, it's quite difficult and, yeah. and i'm surprised that you know companies are not coming forward to support these athletes and uh, all mm. the federation and not including some of you in their project you know so and for next year now it's the mm. olympics What's the what's the criteria for get, making the Kenyan team in the Olympic for the hundred meters? Do you just have to make the A standard, or uh, I, because if you are the only one who made the B standard, are you are the, are, are you certain that you'll be included in the team? Um, we are the A standard, so the qualification time for the Olympics is ten zero five. Okay. And honestly, I can really say it's really hard to qualify because. You, the, the problem that we have is we, we, we under race mo mostly because even me as myself usually under race before the main competition like national. So I train for six months and I only race twice in six in like I, tra I train twice before the main competition. So it's like a gamble. So yeah. during the during during the national. So you're hoping like if you will qualify or not, because it's like you're not sure you're not sure because mostly. The races will help you to sharpen yeah, your to race. Gauge your, yeah. yeah, to gauge where you are. But it's really hard because you can find you can run like at March and then the next race is coming is nationals. So you're not sure if you'll qualify or not at that moment. Well, hopefully this year, I think September, there will be the Continental Tour in, um, mm -hmm. in Nairobi. Uh, 
I understood it's going to be September 26th if they have not, if it's not moved again. So, and I think that you have 100 meters there, as right? So, are you are you setting to compete in that one? In the intercontinental? Yes. Also, the Convention of Africa Athletics was talking about uh, creating one or two events in Africa also for African-based athletes. Uh, I don't um, know what when that will be, but in all, before the end of this year, you might have maybe three opportunities to compete or to try and mm. run the standard. Mm. Um, honestly, I can say for the Intercontinental, the Federation is really not clear about it because you're really okay. hoping for them. We're really hoping for them just to communicate about it and to let every athlete know whether it will be there first of all or not, and also for who will be who will be there who will be selected to represent. Because the only information that I got is there will be a national, but my thinking is that they will do I think a uh, invitational because of the yeah. virus that's going on, so that they'll select few athletes. But you're really I'm really hoping that I'll be considered to run in the intercontinental because that's the current event that I'm training for. Oh, I mean, I really hope so because I mean, it's happening in your city, is mm. you know, and it's an opportunity for you. I'm sure, I'm sure the people organizing that will be will make sure that all the athletes based in Kenya have the opportunity because uh, you guys have not raced for a long time now. Uh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. So, and have you talked about going outside Kenya to compete and maybe leave for a couple of months? So that you can race, like maybe South Africa or even out in Europe. Um, yes, I have. I have really thought about it, but now that it will depend with the manager that I will get. And even most of the time, I was really thinking of even getting a coach by my side, because even right now I can really say it's not that easy to train alone, yeah. knowing that what you're doing might also be right, because you really need someone present. Yeah, and also hard. for the races, yeah, and also for the races, I'm really hoping um, next year that I will get races to travel at least in Europe or also even in South Africa or whichever country. But now it will depend with whoever will manage the yeah, sponsorship for or traveling. Yeah, the traveling and also the hotel for the staying in the hotel and everything. So now it really comes down to now I'm leaving everything to God. But I mean. Yeah, I I really I'm really inspired by your story and and your faith mm. as well because yeah. it's it's not easy to you know to be in the public limelight and have all this going on at the same time. But have you talked yeah. about the um I think the area development center by the CAA in Abidjan? I think that one is a sprint camp. Mm. That's Sorry? where. Mm. I think there's there's a development center by the CAA in Abidjan, um, mm -hmm. or is in Zambia. There's a sprint uh, sprint camp, but you have one mm. in Ken in Kenya, right? That's long distance. Oh, the only one that's present here, here it's only long distance camps that are around. They, I only know that there's one in Nyaururu, and there's another one in Eldoret. So those are the only camps that yeah. are available. And sorry, and there's also one in Rongai. Okay. Best day in Nairobi, so yeah. But the so they... CAA one, I know that the one in Nigeria, there's one in mm. Portacourt in Nigeria is a sprint, and I think mm. there's one managed by uh, uh, Mario Talu's coach, uh, Coach mm, Antony, yeah. in um, yeah, coach Cote d'Ivoire. So mm. have you reached out to them to see if you can take the opportunity to join that camp? Um, I remember that I, I had a one on one conversation with Coach Anthony last year in, in Morocco okay. after the All African Games. So I wanted him to be my coach. So we were really discussing. So I'm really hoping to get his number via one of his athletes. But it's really been a struggle here and there because he's been so busy. Yeah. Yeah. And for the, for the sprints training and for the sprints camp, I'm really praying that maybe in the near future, if I retire, I'll basically open one for yeah, upcoming. That's actually what I want to come back to that. 
Because from yeah. your experience, you know, what you've gone through yeah. now, when you, mm. you know, what are the things that you would tell an up on an up up and coming athlete? How do you is motivate them? What will you what will you tell them about? I mean, there, I'm sure there are a lot of young people also looking up to you in Kenya who are not really mm. so keen on doing long distance. And it, mm. and seeing you achieve success like this is motivating mm. factor for them to want to go into the sport. Because I had a conversation with uh, Julius Yego um, mm. in, in, I think, like two years ago. Uh, mm. And he said that a lot of young athletes actually had moved to start trying out javelin because of his story, right? So, mm. and I'm hoping that you can also do same for sprinters yeah. in Kenya. So, yeah. Yeah, so basically, have you considered that? And what are your plans? What will you say to the young athletes wanting to do sprints? Um, I've really received some few texts. I've really yeah, received some few texts from other athletes. Like they're telling me like they really want to do sprints, but they don't know where to start. And I've been trying to reach out to them and giving them the few coaches that I know that have passed through them. For the past few years so that they can start from the basics at least they should know what they are willing and giving themselves into so that yeah. you know when you're starting and then you feel the struggle you'll be like i know i don't want to do this <laughs> yeah, I want to give up. but it's really a tough mm -hmm. journey for for someone who's really going to start without funds without anything that's coming in so i'll really tell them that there's nothing that comes easy even you said bolt i i know that he started mm -hmm. From somewhere, that's true. He started from yeah. He started from somewhere, and even where he is right now, um, it took him hard work for, for yeah, him to, and dedication uh, to do that. Yeah, yeah, and dedication to training and everything. So I will tell my young athletes that there's nothing that comes easy. So they should really work hard and dedicate themselves into training and also into school and everything that they're doing, and they will achieve even more than me. So that they should start. They should set yeah. um, high standards for themselves so that they can achieve an elite caliber. Yes. I mean, there, there's this um, also quote that you had that we used a couple of weeks back where you said, people, you've always been told that your choice of distance won't attract sponsors in Kenya. But, mm. you know, you, you know, you're still determined to prove them wrong. And, go, you know, and I like the fact that you have faith that, you know, you can change that story, you know. So, mm. I, I mean, I would like to wish you all the best because mm. uh, what you're doing is really, uh, is really brave. And, um, mm. and I know that one person can change the story. You can create, open the door for generations of Kenya athletes, you know, yeah. you know coming through. And, mm. you know, it's, it shouldn't be only long distance running. I'm sure that, Naturally, in Kenya, you know, uh, athletes from different shape, different body type should be able to do different events. And, uh, you know, yeah. the more the merrier, basically. Uh, I, mm. I know that when there's scarce resources, um, normally the federation and some of the managers would like to set their priorities for, you know, what they've been used to. I mean, uh, we all know that Kenya will always be a factor in. 800 meter and above to the marathon. Mm. So, so I understand that, but it, there sh should also be, you know, a way to encourage all the athletes, especially people that are pioneers like you, you know. Mm. So last words, what would you like to tell Africa, even sponsors in your own words, what do you want? Just let's round up the show. Um, what I can say is, Oh, what, what can I say? Um, um, guys, we, um, I can really say that you really need to put God first because he is everything. That's all I can really say. Um, God, God, God can turn everything around because I remember um, giving my life to Christ back in 2016. From that day, um, everything has been a turning point yeah. for me in athletics, in my career, and also in my marriage life. So just giving my life to Christ and just knowing and trusting him that the future will be secure. That's all I can really tell 
my fellow athletes so that they cannot rely on themselves because all that we are doing is not by our own strength. It's only God who helps us, who helps us to do all this and he is the way maker. Yes. Yeah. On that note, I want to say thank you very much, uh, Mark, for coming. Uh, you know, this weekend has been a very busy weekend for us. Actually, uh -huh. uh, yesterday was the 16th year anniversary of Athletics Africa. It's been 16 wow. years that we started this website to promote wow. and support African athletes. And we Happy tried to support. Thank you so much. So, <laughs> so thanks. I mean, you being our anniversary guest has been a very good thing. And I Thank really, you so really much. wish you all the best. And I, hopefully, I'll see you in Nairobi. Or at least mm -hmm. I'll see you next year. You know, once we can travel again, I, I, I'll see you compete at the Olympics. All the best. So thank you so much, Mark, and we wish you, you. all the best. God bless. Mm. God bless you too. Thank you so much for the invite.